Uh, presenting first is Anna <laughs> Nørkær Nielsen. She's from Aalborg University, and today she will be talking about breaking the wall of sustainable school renovation. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can start. Ah. Yeah, so today I will be breaking the wall of sustainable school renovation. And more precisely, I will talk about decision making in the early stasi stages of uh, school renovation projects. Uh, so why focus on uh, renovating our buildings? That's because in Denmark, around 40% of our energy usage is um, um, made from, the, from our buildings. And uh, also, our buildings last long, so there's a huge potential in uh, renovating our buildings for uh, um, reducing the energy usage. But sustainability is not only about reducing energy, it's also about other factors such as uh, social sustainability, how the buildings look, how we feel uh, walking around in them, um, economic sustainability, how is the um, life cycle cost of the building run, and the uh, energy usage, and um, how the building will um, uh, yeah, perform. So why focus on school renovation and the school buildings? That's because a lot of our school buildings in Denmark are very old and worn out. And also in 2014, we had a new school reform, which entailed some new demands in uh, our building to uh, meet these new ideas. So um, all of this concept of uh, sustainability can be very complex. We have a lot of different parameters that we have to take into account. And um, in that case, it's very uh, difficult for the building owner to choose uh, which schools to renovate and in which uh, order this, sh this should be done. Um, so what I want to make is a decision support tool that can help the public building owner to make this uh, prioritization and uh, find out um, the order of uh, the renovation actions. Uh, and the way I'm going to do this is uh, through an ac action research uh, approach that I'm doing in close relation to uh, the municipality in Aalborg. Um, so in that way, uh, the tool that I will be inventing is something that is uh, both producing knowledge in the uh, because it's a PhD project, of course, but also it will be something that can help them in their work uh, with these things. Uh, and the, in that case, it will be very close to, to their practice. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. <laughs> Before time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stay up here. Oh. oh, yeah. Impressive, with 15 seconds to spare as well. <laughs> so let's start by uh, asking the jury if you guys uh, have any questions. Here's the mic right there. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. Uh, in your words, what's wrong with the way we do it now? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the way we do it now, but it's, uh, it's a very complex area. And what I see when I talk to the public buildings owner, building owners is that um, the way they do it now, they kind of um, invent the method from the beginning every time they do it. So what I want to do is to make it easier for them. And for me, if I can make something that can uh, make the process easier with the schools, then it can be easy to apply for other kind of buildings, like uh, when you're doing um, children's institutions or cultural buildings or other um, in, in other building areas as well. Absolutely, go ahead. So when you say decision tool, could you be a little bit more concrete as to exactly how you think this will be implemented? Yeah. Um, so the problem is that there are many different criteria when you talk about a renovation uh, and it's often some conflicts in criteria as well and, and historically you have uh, mostly looked into like energy usage and economy but when you have, want to have a holistic approach to, to sustainability it's uh, sometimes very hard to uh, kind of uh, weigh and prioritize these criteria. So what I want to make is something that um, 
can make it easier for them to kind of put their values uh, into this uh, tool so they can use it again and again. Or if they want to put it against some assessment tool like uh, DDNB or other certification systems. Could you tell us a bit about what happens to people that live inside the uh, old buildings, <laughs> burned down buildings? I mean, it's, you don't talk much about the teachers or the, or the pupils inside. No, of course, uh, the users are very central when we talk about any building and school buildings as well. And uh, some of the things are, of course, uh, the physical uh, indoor environment, like the air quality and uh, things like that. And we see that uh, the air quality in our existing school is not uh, very good. And, uh, and also what uh, the challenges are, um, the new idea presented in the school reform, for instance, um, put some new demands on, on the old buildings because the new way of teaching is like uh, you want to introduce more movement and you want to make flexible rooms and that all um, it gives some new possibilities in the school. S yeah. So the renovation is not only about energy usage? No, it's, it's about sustainability in a whole. So yeah, one thing is uh, the energy usage but, but it's more about uh, yeah, the other values as well, and the social parameters like the values of a um, a school building that can underline the way of teaching that the teachers want to do in today. I'm a bit curious. How is your, this tool you're developing? It sounds very interesting. Is it building on existing tools in this area, or is it something you have developed? from scratch, so to say? Or? Uh, I haven't developed it yet. <laughs> it's on the idea yeah. plane. But it's, um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be a digital tool. I think it will. But otherwise, it will be a method that can, that can help in, uh, in this area. Is there similar tools right now, like, like that one you're envisaging? Or? Yeah, there are. So what I want to do is, is uh, make something that is, can be used in the municipality of Aalborg in the first place and to uh, help improve their practice and then um, later it can be scaled for uh, other public buildings and also uh, for, uh, what's that called, um, uh, yeah, people who owns a lot of buildings in general and not only the public building owners. Are you communicating with concrete actors on this, on with specific schools or specific interest groups at the municipality? Yeah, so I'm in a, a close collaboration with the municipality of Olbo, uh, and then I'm uh, following different renovation, school renovation uh, projects in Olbo as well, um, in different stages also. So this is also a discussion because uh, this is more actually on a political level because you have to prioritize uh, between your buildings. So um, the users are not involved at this stage. It's more uh, that only happens when you have actually chosen the building and you start the renovation project there. Great. Um, any more questions from the jury? Final question? No. Great. Can I borrow your mic real quick? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Audience, <laughs> any questions from you guys? Anything where you're thinking, I really got to know about that one thing. She didn't address that particular topic. Yes, ma'am. I knew that would get something. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Can you just start by telling us your name real quick? Uh, yes, my name is Lika Vinia. I'm a PhD candidate um, visiting from the Netherlands and now Sorry. in the uh, humanities uh, mm -hmm. department. Um, I was wondering, you talk about the political level and you follow some schools. Um, do you know of any, is there any demand from the side of the school owners, the homeowners? Um, because you, you said, I'm not sure if they're doing anything wrong now, I just want to make it more efficient. Is mm -hmm. there a large demand from that side as well? Yeah, there are from, uh, from the people I have talked to and that's, that's the whole a uh, reason why I have ended up with having this focus, that's because, uh, as I see it now, that's uh, their main challenge, because in Olbo they have actually been, been doing um, a lot of this work, and they have been out uh, um, yeah, mapping the, the schools, existing tools, to see how, how does it look now, and they have been doing a lot of work in the uh, prioritization of this, and also uh, to choose uh, which buildings it is. 
but they also um, see a lot of things in, in the process that uh, they would like to improve. And, uh, and again, they, they would like to do this more uh, easily uh, transferable to their other uh, building types as well. Great. Thank you, Anna. Everyone, a big round of applause for Ms. Anna. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So, Jerry, I'm going to give you guys one minute to reflect on the presentation and also ask the audience to just take a few minutes, reflect on what she just said, and score your marks. Thank you.